Hello, this is Tony Myers on the Charisma Podcast Network, and this is Pushing Boundaries, Living Supernaturally. Every one of these podcasts are created to guide you to acknowledge your full healing. By his wounds, you were healed. So I want you to live that out. We aren't to live a life plagued by illnesses or injuries, but we are to live our lives with a healthy body. Moses, at 120 years old, had keen eyesight and strong muscles under the Old Covenant. We can attain that as well under the blood covenant of Christ. Today's episode is no different, but before I introduce today's topic, I want you to write down a miracle you've experienced in your own body. Do it right now. Every one of us has experienced a miracle at one time. Remember the miracle. Now, write down a specific area of your body you need a miracle. Then say to yourself, Jesus healed that. So I am healed of this. Send me an email at TonyJustBelieves at gmail.com with your miracle request, and I will speak life over that need. Today, I have got a super exciting guest. She is Christina Pereira. And look, she does a little bit of everything, okay? <laughs> she She's a revivalist. She's an author. She's a podcaster on the Charisma Podcast Network. And that podcast is called Revealing Jesus. She has got so much going on. But her story and just talking to Christina is incredible. So y'all just strap yourselves in. This is going to be awesome and a Holy Spirit moment. And I want to add this. With Christina, I compare her to Dan Muller. And I've told her this, so this is not a shock. Uh, <laughs> I compare her to Dan Muller because Dan Muller just oozes love. Mm. And Christina is the same way. Now that's the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. But you can tell her heart is so full of love for people. And that I find very refreshing. So, Christina, mm -hmm. welcome to Pushing Boundaries. Thank you so much for having me, Tony. I'm so excited. I, I love your podcast. I love your testimony. And I love talking to you. <laughs> well... I tell you what, I truly appreciate you. And the more I listen to your podcast, it's like, wow, it is amazing. And all the interviews you do, incredible. You keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I will take that because, oh, mm -hmm. man, sometimes it's tough. <laughs> One thing I want to highlight right away, because you have got such a heart for the poor and the mm -hmm. broken and and the those that have fallen on to misfortune you have this thing called the king's table that is so refreshing so i do want you to just tell people about that and that's something you do locally in your area right yes we do this amazing event called the King's Table. And it's one of my favorite events because it is a prophetic um, and tangible declaration of 
uh, their, um, their value, the people that we serve. We go out onto the streets and we pick up members of the homeless community and uh, we serve uh, at-risk people groups like uh, people coming out of uh, domestic violence and things like that. And we literally put on this wedding banquet, like from the book of Matthew. And uh, a it true was beautiful wedding banquet, right? A, a true wedding banquet. Yes. I'm talking tablecloths and uh, vases with uh, flowers. And we do, I invite an incredibly anointed uh, worship music. And um, we have a gospel message and different things like that. And it's so amazing because it, it hits people's hearts in a way that they don't expect. And um, it truly is uh, the heart of God over people. And I see, I see the affliction that people are experiencing, but I want to go beyond that. What I see is I see who they are in Christ. That's what I see. And they're just waiting for someone to come along and remind them who they are or maybe even tell them for the first time. And I don't know if a lot of people know this, but a lot of um, members of the homeless community are already believers. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's a privilege and it's an honor to go in and remind them how loved, how valuable that God sees them, that we see them, that they're important. And we go in there and we don't just give them sandwiches. I love that people give them sandwiches. We got to do that because we got to eat three times a day. Right. But <laughs> we go in there and we give them the best meal that we can give them. I even, I had a wedding cake made for them. <laughs> and, oh, wow. Um, yeah. And so we give them, I think like, I think it's like a, like a roast beef and uh, grilled vegetables and uh, roasted potatoes. And like I said, the wedding cake and we try to get um, a local churches and different ministries and businesses apart um, and to come in and, just be the body of Christ together and other. Amen. That is so wonderful. Um, I can just imagine their faces too and being treated like royalty. And when I saw that, it's like, that is so awesome. I just think that's incredible. The King's Table, just the name of it is wonderful. And then mm. you've got the wedding feast. Oh, mm -hmm. talk about sh shadows and types. That's just love it. Yeah. Um, now, let's talk about Christina and revealing Jesus, to use your <laughs> own saying. <laughs> How is Jesus revealed to you? Wow. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so thankful, you know, that Jesus is who he is. You know, I, I always tell him all the time, he could have been anything, you know, but he is love himself. And uh, I'm so thankful. He is, he is meekness and majesty. He is compassion and strength. He is the lion and the lamb. He's all of these beautiful dichotomous pictures all rolled into one. And he's so madly in love with us. And it just blows my mind on a daily basis who he is and how, how kind he is, how merciful and how beautiful and um, just how much he loves us, you know, and when I started the podcast, you know, obviously I prayed and I was like, okay, Lord, do you want me to do this? Cause the opportunity came and I said, Lord, I'm not going to do it if you don't do it. <laughs> so he said, call it revealing Jesus, do this, this, and this <laughs> and go for it. And so I did. And, um, I am so blown away by the goodness of God because I get to hear testimonies every day of his faithfulness. And I am to, to me, like, there's nowhere else I want to be but sitting at his feet and hearing his goodness. That's it. That's all I want. Amen. And here's the thing that I love is that you met Jesus 
at a very young age, you know, in my case, I was 43. And so I find it it's refreshing to me to hear testimony that here's this seven year old yeah. is falling in love with Jesus. And, you know, tell me about that because this is going to shock a lot of people. But that's as a seven year old, some a teacher told you something and you went with it. So I just did. tell me about that a little bit. I'm <laughs> trying not to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so I grew up in a Baptist background. Um, my parents took us to church. My grandmother actually took me to the church to church for the first time. And um, there somebody told me about Jesus and something inside of me just said, I know him. I know him. It was as if I remembered him from before. And I was like, this is the person that I always knew was there. Like I knew he was there, you know? And, um, I gave my life to Jesus at seven years old. And, um, I remember one day I was in Sunday school and my Sunday school teacher looked at me and she said, you know, you can talk to God. And I said, okay, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so I did. And, you know, in my little child, like mine, you know, um, I just thought he was like everybody else. You know, I just talked to him and I just believed he would talk back to me. And of course he did. And that was, I had this incredible prophetic relationship with God, even though I didn't know what the word prophetic meant and I had no grid for it. And I would just lay there in bed all night long and I would, I would talk to my heavenly father and I would. I'd tell him all about my cat. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I really, really love that. Um, yeah. And you would carry on a normal conversation with him. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right In there. Fact. That is what the body of Christ needs to hear. Yes. And, and I really feel like it was just my simple childlike faith. That, that was it. I mean, there was nothing. I had no teaching on it. I had no grid. I had nothing. In fact, I would, and I, I didn't realize that this wasn't the case for everybody. Um, not until I was much, much older. And I, and I would hear people talking like, uh, they'd say like, I, I would just, I wish I could ask God this, or I wish I could have this or whatever. And I would just be like, why don't you just ask him? You know, like why, you know, <laughs> why don't you just ask him? <laughs> so, but it's just that little childlike faith, you know, and uh, Jesus says, you know, we have to become like little children to enter the kingdom of God. And it's absolutely true. And I will tell you, you know, some of my most favorite prophetic words that I have ever gotten have been from kids. 100%. Amen. I love that. You know, kids, they're just so precious yeah. and they are so accepting and, you know, just just the picture you painted you just took what your sunday school teacher said and ran with it and that yeah. is so beautiful you've experienced a lot of healings for yourself correct yes <laughs> yes <laughs> go ahead and and tell us of of one of those testimonies that you have. Yes. So I've experienced a lot of healing from the Lord. I, to be honest with you, I, I can't possibly even describe every single one of them, but one of the most profound um, happened when I was about, I'd say my, my late twenties. Um, so right after my husband and I got married, um, I got incredibly sick. Um, I'm talking like I was in bed and I, I couldn't even stay awake. I was just so very sick. I could, you know, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't getting up. I wasn't awake very long of the day and it was really bad. And I was actually very scared. Um, come to find out, um, you know, the doctors said that I was developing some kind of uh, blood cancer 
and I actually thought I might have multiple myeloma. And um, it was a really very a very tough time. Uh, and then I had a friend, a charismatic friend, who told me about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I grew up Baptist. I didn't hear anything about baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, but uh, she, I was in just such a desperate place. And I was like, okay, God, if this is you, I want it. And uh, we prayed outside of an ice cream shop. And she looked at me and she goes, now speak in tongues. And I said, yeah, she got among my Sunday. <laughs> and uh, I had no idea, you know. <laughs> and um, and nothing really, other than that, really strange happened. I went to bed that night um, and I woke up and the presence of the Lord was in my room when I woke up. And I just remember weeping, just weeping because he was there with me in this really difficult time. Um, and I was so hungry to read the word of God. I was ravenous. I mean, uh, to say that I read the Bible would be an understatement. Like I would just pour through it. That was all I would do. And, um, and he was just there and, um, he took me on this journey over the next few years. Um, I was so very sick that I had to give up my job. I was in, I worked in finance. I was very good at what I did. I was a loan, pro, um, a loan originator um, for two very well-known um, mortgage companies and things. And, and uh, he just began to teach me and um, he just began to pour into me. And, you know, I went on this journey and um, they also discovered that not only had my immune system gone haywire, I had three different infections going on. I had one huge viral infection, one bacterial and one fungal. I had four different autoimmune disorders and they later diagnosed with Lyme disease as well. So, yeah, so I was, I was just a wreck. Um, I was so very sick and, you know, he, he made this incredibly scary and difficult moment into something really beautiful. And uh, just the fact that he was there with me, he was comforting me. He was teaching me. He was healing me every step of the way. And um, I remember I went with a group of friends to uh, voice of the apostles one year. And um, this was, I was ready. I was ready for just a really powerful encounter with God. And I was, I, I knew that he was going to heal me. I knew that. And, um, and I will never forget it. Um, my friend had a, uh, had a uh, fellow friend uh, who had just gone on a global awakening trip uh, down to Brazil with Randy Clark. And uh, she just happened to run into him and she goes, Hey, this is my friend. She's, you know, will you pray for healing for her? And, um, and he was like, sure. And I started to tell him, you know, what was going on with me. And she stopped me and she said, no, let's let, let's let the Holy Spirit tell him. And I'm so glad that she did because man, when he started getting words of knowledge and talking about my bone marrow and my immune system and everything, I could just feel faith just shoot through the ceiling of this auditorium. And at that moment that it did, like the electrocution like that I felt was just so incredibly powerful. It felt like I had stuck my finger into a thousand volts of electricity. And it wasn't painful or anything like that, but I had absolutely no control over my body, none. <laughs> none and and it was the strangest sensation um i could feel every single nerve in my body at the same time um my tongue was moving in my mouth like uncontrollably like you know just my my face just everything it was just the wildest sensation and um from that moment on um all of the pain left all of the all of the symptoms and everything left it was just absolutely astounding. And, you know, I've had many touches with God, but it, it started to scare me a little bit. And I was like, okay, Lord, it's starting to scare me. 
and immediately he backed off. But, you know, I regret that to this day. I do. <laughs> I really do. And so when it started being too much for you, this is how much the Lord loves us. So when it started to be too much for you and you just ask the Lord to back off a little bit, he did. A hundred percent. Yeah. In fact, I don't even know that I really asked him. I would just like, I had this thought in my mind, right? like, oh gosh, this is starting to scare me. And immediately <laughs> he was like, okay, you know. So right, but, right then and there. Yeah. You knew you were healed. All yeah. the symptoms left. Yeah. And that, that was Dr. Rand Randy Clark praying for you. Well, no, it was actually um, just somebody who had gone on Someone a, uh, oh, okay. yeah, it was just somebody who had gone on a, uh, a, um, a mission trip with Global Awakening. It was here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, wow. That's an awesome testimony. You also make it a complete habit when you are out and about, you're just ministering to people. Am mm -hmm. I correct? I'm always looking for somebody. I'm always listening to the heart of God, you know? <laughs> yeah. And what, what, what has one of those instances be like? You know, I've had some really fun instances, you know, just following the Holy Spirit. I think one of my most favorite, and I was just talking about this the other day, was Jiffy Loop. <laughs> um, I was getting my oil changed, and um, I was sitting in the waiting room, and I was just like, okay, God, who do you want to, who do you want to talk to? And um, he started showing this gentleman sitting across from me that he needed healing in his knee. And so, you know, I went over them and I, I, I just gently explained, I was like, you know, I really, are you having trouble in your knee? I was like, you know, I feel, really feel like the Lord wants to heal that. And he, he looked at me a little concerned, a little bit, a little bit concerned, but then listen to this. So it just happened to be right. That, uh, there was a CBN or a station playing on the TV in the waiting room. And I kid you not the host of the show looked at the TV, like looked at the camera that moment. He said, God is healing someone's knee right now. That man looked at me like, pray for me right now, right now, right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then from that moment on, the whole Jiffy Lube kind of erupted with, you know, the Holy Spirit. So much so I started, you know, praying over people and then people wanted prophetic words. And I'm just like, okay, you know, my, my whole thing is, is, um, I just lean into the heart of God and what he wants to say to his kids. And we know that as parents, we always want to say something to our kids. I just believe that, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it was so funny because the guy who was uh, the shop manager was like working in the back and he was like, Hey, can you come here real quick? And I was like, okay, I thought he wanted to talk to me about my car. I thought, you know, maybe, you know, to go over the inspection and everything or whatever. And, um, he was like, Hey, can you, can you do what you did for them out there for me? <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know. And I just started, you know, just saying what the Lord I felt like was saying for him on his heart, you know, and he was just crying and weeping and, you know, it was great. We had like a knee healing and like just a blow up in the jiffy lube. And I was just getting my all changed. <laughs> that really sounds like a time. It was a Thanksgiving day. I was at Walmart and I prayed for one woman in a wheelchair and all of a sudden there was like a prayer line that formed up Aww. and you know, some of the exciting adventures we have with God is just awesome. Um, mm. Do you have another one that, that, that jumps up at you? Where you were yeah. just out and about and go ahead. Yes. Um, so one of my other favorites, I, I shop at BJ's a lot. That's where we get a lot of our groceries. And so um, I, I was in there one day and uh, I was actually talking to one of the butchers about getting some meat or something like that. And I started telling him about, you know, um, 
he had actually said something to me about something that was going on in his life. He just kind of made like a passing comment. And I could just tell this was just something that was inside of him. And a lot of times I find that people will just say things to me. Um, it's like they can sense the heart of God. It's like they just will say something that's on their heart. And they don't even realize it. They, they're responding um, subconsciously um, to the Holy Spirit on you. And um, so I began to talk to him and I started telling him about how much Jesus loves him and, and you know, how, how valuable he was and how God had a good plan for his life and just all these different things and things that the Lord was sharing with me. And he ended up giving his life right there to BJ's, um, you know, just the butcher right there. And I see him all the time, you know, just be like, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So first of all, can anyone have these experiences? Yes. <laughs> you know, Christina, although you are special and you are the father's baby girl, but guess what? I'm daddy's favorite son too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so talk to people because yes, you are special. I'm special. We're special. But so many people feel like they don't have what Christina has. They don't have what Tony has. And my heart is always to show people, you yeah. have the same Holy Spirit inside of you that you can have amazing experiences as well. Yes. So go, go ahead, Christina. Yeah, I would just say, you know, one of the most beautiful things I've learned about God is that um, God dreams in people and um, every single one of us are his dreams. And, uh, you know, he designed each and every one of us with uh, these personalities and different looks and uh, different uh, attributes and talents. And each one of us is precious to him. You know, the Bible says that he's willing that none should perish. None. And I, and I feel like if we can just wrap our heads around that and just really begin to understand that as much as we see our kids, can you imagine if you were had one of your kids, you'd be so willing that they wouldn't perish. Well, now imagine if you had, you know, 300 million kids, you know. Each one is still precious, even if you have that many. Um, and so, yeah, there's absolutely nothing special about me. I love the grace of God. I love the new covenant of God because it leveled the playing field for everybody. All that I have and all that Tony has or all that any of us have is given to us because of the grace of God, because of Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit poured out on the day of Pentecost. And every single person, every dream of God is invited into this life. And um, it's just, you know, I used to struggle sometimes and think, is this for me? Was this for me? And, you know, the Lord really did a work in my heart and just began to show me that every one of us is so valuable. You have a part to play that nobody else can play. You can touch people the way that nobody else can. You know, nobody can be Tony, but Tony. Nobody can be me, but me. Nobody can be Dan Moeller, but Dan Moeller. And we have absolutely every single one of us is needed. You know, every single one of us. And that's where your heart is, because your heart is in unifying the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that is huge. Yeah. And that is one thing that we need to strive for and become because unification does not mean depersonification yes absolutely and we all play a huge part and i love how you made the statement that you know i reach people differently than you reach people mm -hmm. and we each have a part well, when we're unified, then that will become easier and more spread. Go ahead and talk about that for a minute. 
Yeah. So the great news is, is that Jesus has already unified us. That's the great news. We're just coming to realize that. <laughs> there you go. I <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> you know, the Lord says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And this is an area that, that we've, the body of Christ has had the, the deception pulled over their eyes. He's already created in himself one new man. It's neither uh, male nor female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. We are all one in Christ. We are all one in the last Adam, no longer in the first Adam, those who believe. And um, that's the beauty. And in ministry, when we do events, I tell people this all the time, we don't reinvent the wheel. We just help put the wheel together. We're just a, a cog in the middle of it. That's it. So we bring um, members of the body of Christ together that are already doing stuff really well. And we just give a platform and a place um, to do it well together. That's it. So like for the King's Table, when we bring people together, we'll get people who already have transportation services. Their church already has transportation services. That's great. Perfect. You guys go pick them up. <laughs> we'll get people who um, are doing really amazing anointed worship. Perfect. You guys play. You know, we'll get people who love to cook. Perfect. You guys make the food, you know, and that's what we do. That's it. That's it. And, you know, it's, it's so beautiful. And I tell people this all the time, honor paves the kingdom roads, honor, it's honor. And when we honor one another, the world will see our love and our honor for the people that we're serving. Not only do we need, do we need to honor one another, but the people we're serving, you know, I see so many posts and things about, you know, putting people's pictures on social media. I think everybody has a story and it deserves to be told. Everybody's got a face. Everybody's got a name. Everybody's got a story. And I love their stories. They're beautiful to me and they're beautiful to God. And that's it. Amen. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was totally awesome and I, <laughs> and I love how you came up well, already unified and that's the truth yeah you know I, I talk a lot about the oneness we have with God and you know we he's already given us everything mm. and I just loved how right away you brought it out He's already unified the body. We just haven't recognized it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and and the, one of the biggest things I've found is that, that people have been taught to fear what they don't understand or don't have a good for. And I long to see the body of Christ just say, okay, is this God? Yes, it's God. Let's go for it. You know, because <laughs> I really believe that we're coming into a time when he's going to do things that we don't have grids for um, because we simply need it. You know, I look, you know, that's one thing is. And please, no one take me the wrong way, but my listeners know me well enough. This does not contain everything that God will ever do, nor does it contain everything he wants to do. Mm -hmm. There is so much more. Yes. So don't keep the book closed. Let the book be open and <laughs> let us walk in newness. Yeah. Because we're at a place in history where we need to experience things that are mm -hmm. the other generations have never experienced. And so we need to be open to experiencing that, not in trying to manipulate it to happen, but mm -hmm. be open with what the Lord wants to do. And then just let us be a vessel. I'm just a vessel all right, Lord, you want me to walk in Walmart and pray for someone in we Absolutely. You want me to do this? Okay. And that's simply what we need to do so that we can see God's fullness. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, it's all birthed out of that intimate relationship with God. You know, Jesus says that we will do greater works because he's going to the Father and he's sending the helper, the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and a lot of the, the going into Walmart, it's in the Bible, it's in the Acts, it's in the Acts of the Apostles, you know, with Peter and, uh, you know, James walking down the road and healing the man at the temple gate. Beautiful. That was their Walmart, you know? Amen. Amen. It's all in there. So what would you like to leave the viewers and listeners with? Uh, <laughs> what's on your heart? You know, I was praying about our, our time this morning and I was spending some time with Jesus and I was just meditating on the beauty of a seed. And I'm hoping today that maybe we've planted some seeds of faith. And, you know, something amazing happens in nature. If we just look at the nature of a seed and how God created it, uh, Jesus says, if you have faith, the smell is a mustard seed. You can move mountains. And so I hope today a seed of faith has been planted in people's hearts to simply believe that God is good and he is for them. And this is for them. This life, this Christian life, this, you know, crazy, amazing adventure with God, right? The most amazing thing is, is that when God reproduces, if one seed falls to the ground and it grows into a tree, it produces so many fruits. It, it doesn't produce just five, five more seeds. It produces a thousand, 10,000 more seeds. And so my hope today is that people will see how amazingly fruitful that God wants them to be. And they will begin to just allow that seed of faith to grow in their heart and see him be fruitful through their lives. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot on this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> and this has just struck me because here, here lately, with Roe versus Wade being overturned, I have seen, I don't want to use the word hate, yeah. but the way it comes across from Christians, yeah, that grieves my heart. Yeah. Because then people are getting the wrong representation of Jesus. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. let's be honest, the whole thing with the abortion issue is a powder keg. Mm -hmm. But this is something that the Lord has mercy for and with. He meets people where they're at. Mm -hmm. And we as believers instead of condemnation we just need to be that much more loving yes and so i want you to address just how we should be the very emulation of love because god is the very essence of love mm -hmm. and in our interaction over these hot issues that's when we need to be more merciful and more loving mm -hmm. And not draw these. Well, I'm going to let you speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I feel the same way, Tony. Um, when, you know, to be honest with you, um, quite a few years ago, I've, you know, I was praying with the Lord. We were talking about some elected officials. I'm not going to name any names. And um, he told me, he said, this isn't going to be good. And I waited and watched and I prayed and I prayed and I watched and I have wept so much over the body of Christ and over where we are, even up until this moment of up until Roe versus Wade. And I just had this conversation with um, a neighbor of mine on my deck this weekend that my heart is so broken because people are not seeing who Jesus really is because of the hatred and division. I like to minister how Jesus ministers. And so if I don't see Jesus doing it, I'm not doing it. That's just really how I draw the line. And nowhere in the scripture did Jesus uh, minister 
some of the ways that I'm seeing the body of Christ minister. I like to, let's just talk about one story, the woman caught in adultery. Let's just Mm -hmm. talk about that. Just, just that one, you know, that woman. So first of all, there was a woman and a man and they were caught in adultery and the Pharisees drug just the woman to the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They didn't drag the man, right? Just the woman. And they threw her at the feet of Jesus while he was teaching. They interrupted the teaching of the Lord and they put Jesus on the spot. And Jesus answered with wisdom. He stooped down and he began to write in the, in the, um, the ground at the temple. And, uh, you know, the Bible doesn't um, make it clear what he was writing, but I've, I've heard some of my favorite teachers who've actually been to Israel and said, that the ground actually wasn't dirt, but it was stone and it probably had, you know, dirt on top of it. And I believe what the Lord was doing in that moment is he was writing the 10 commandments. I believe that Um, because he stooped down twice, fulfilling the type um, in, in the Bible of writing the 10 commandments twice given to Moses. And what he wrote was, you know, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, all of that. And it created such an atmosphere of grace because he looked around and he said, let him who is without the first, uh, without sin, cast the first stone. And the truth is, is that we all had sin, every single one of us. And I think if we were to um, stop taking the place of the Pharisee and start taking the place of Jesus and start saying, let him who is without sin, cast the first stone, I think we'd see a big change. Again, I minister like Jesus ministers, you know, if I don't see him, if I don't see him doing it, even the woman, the woman at the well, you know, who had five husbands who was living in adultery, right? He, he still ministered to her with such grace and such wisdom. He still spoke to her in a way that called out who she really is. You see, I'm a big believer, just like the Bible says that the goodness of God is what causes men's hearts to repent. And see, I really believe, you know, we are in the new covenant of grace. We are not in the time where God is judging nations. And the body of Christ has been lied to and and been made fearful of God judging the nation of the United States for these things. But the truth is, is that right now, until the church is raptured out of here, we are in the age of grace. And that's the time where God is being good to all of us. And I got to tell you, none of us deserve it. Not you, not me, not anyone. And if we just wrap our minds around that, um, we can start giving good to people who don't deserve it as well. Amen. I love that. That, (laughs) And that's exactly right. And if we all look at Jesus and with the love he ministered to instead you know so many times and here's where i think we go off we look at how jesus responded to the pharisees Mm -hmm. and so we look at that oh that's how i need to respond no 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 (laughs) not at all you know not everyone is a pharisee yeah. There are there are people like Paul who need that harshness, but that's that should not be. <laughs> Most people just need love. Yes. And they need ministered where they're at. And that's yes. what Jesus did. You will not find just a regular person that doesn't need some softness, some love, and being dealt with with kitty gloves. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And so it does really rip up my heart, especially, you know, I was an atheist. Yeah. And one thing that kept me in atheist was the way Christians judged me, treated me. Um, That's what creates atheists. Yeah. So 
if we start reaching out everybody just like Jesus did with love, then we will start seeing the new creation in them spring up. Mm -hmm. so, That's right. Any last, I'm going to ask you to pray. Okay. Do you have any last, last, last minute words? <laughs> <laughs> last, last minute words. Um, I love that you mentioned Paul. I love Paul. He's, he is by far one of my favorite apostles. And, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, Paul ran with zeal without knowledge as a Pharisee. But once he experienced and tasted the goodness of God, he ran as an apostle and turned this world upside down for Jesus. And um, we will always run so much further with wisdom, with knowledge of who Jesus is, than we will ever run as a Pharisee. And uh, I just want to leave people with that thought. Amen. Would you please... How, however the Holy Spirit leads you, pray for everyone. It would be my pleasure. <laughs> Lord Jesus, God, I just thank you so much for this time here with my friend, Tony, God. And I thank you for his podcast and for his ministry of declaring your goodness, God. Father God, I just thank you that for everyone watching this, Jesus, would you just encounter them, Holy Spirit, right now? Would you just wrap your arms around them? Or would you just tell them how loved and how valuable they are, God? Would you just declare to them their worth and value and that we need them. The body of Christ needs them. We need the dreams. We need the personality. We need the gifts. We need the talents that you've placed in them. And they are important to you, God. And they're important to us, God. And they're important to the people that they will touch, God. They will touch people that won't be touched unless they run. So, Father God, I thank you for just wrapping them up in your arms and encouraging them and lighting a fire in their souls to run this race for you, God, for sending laborers into the field because the harvest is ripe. And I pray, Father, that they will catch a glimpse of your goodness, God, that, they're, that all of the hardness will fall away from hearts, all of the bitterness and angst and division and um, sorrow, God, that we're facing right now. And that they would have hope for our nation, God, because you are still good. And we are still the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for coming on as a guest. I personally enjoyed it. And <laughs> <laughs> I know the listeners and the viewers will get so much out of this. So thank you very much. And right now I just speak, be blessed. Amen. Be healed. And be a blessing. Amen. Thank you for watching my channel. Now, hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell. There you go. Click it. All right. Good. Write a comment. If you would like prayer, write a comment for prayer. Give me some feedback. What about this teaching helped you? What didn't help you? Now, if you would like to partner with Outside the Four Walls Ministry, my ministry, then simply go to TonyBelieves.com. And we appreciate you wanting to partner with us to reach the lost and see everyone healed. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Be healed and be a blessing.